Well, so going on to another question I'm sure comes up a lot. Um, well, if you were, let's see, if this were an all-male ensemble, <laughs> this question would never come up. You would never ask an all-male ensemble. So was that on purpose? Why do you only have men in your group? But, you know, it comes up a lot. So I'm going to ask it just because I'm <laughs> yeah. sure people are curious. You know, did you intentionally try to make it an all-female group? Yeah, well, um, in the beginning, it was a happy accident in that I knew that I wanted to work with these instruments. I had these four friends who played these instruments, and I also, you know, play in the group on keyboards, too. So, um, and they all, all these friends happened to be women. And so it didn't even, I didn't even think about it at the beginning. But then when I you know, even on our second, third rehearsal, I, I, I started to be more conscious of it and really think about what this meant. And I, I realized it was really nice actually to make music with women because it's just something that never happens. And, um, we just rehearsals have this really fun, free atmosphere. And I think that the fact that we're all women is a small part of that. Um, the fact that we're all friends is a much more important part of that. Um, but then also it really helped me, it was kind of like a shortcut to my being able to have a vision for what the group looked like and, you know, what our press photos were like and how we looked on stage and what we wore. And, um, all these things are, are less important than the music itself, but are still, I think, important. I think it's important for any group, whether it's an ensemble or a band or a string quartet to have a kind of visual identity if you're going to be playing live. So the fact that we're all women was a shortcut for me to, to kind of, be able to, to envision that a little sooner. Um, and we're not exclusive at all. I mean, like we have, you know, a lot of, um, you know, we've had guys play with the group. Um, my friend, John Altieri conducted us for a film score project. My friend Bryce Desner played guitar on our album. Um, William Bertel and Florent Gis, they, they sing on the album. So it's like, it's not definitely not an exclusive thing, but I do actually love that it kind of worked out this way. Sure. Well, it's kind of like the genre thing. It's like you, it, it seems to me like it was a happy, like you didn't actually think about it, right? Like you said, it was a happy accident. So hopefully that'll be part of the future, you know, as well, that there will be, because women are underrepresented. Um, I think especially in contemporary classical music, they're just, they're still really mm -hmm. underrepresented. So yeah, so I hope it's always, you know, I hope that's a, you know, like part of the future. So this is actually your first time playing outside of New York. Um, how did you come about arranging this tour and this Midwestern tour, which starts with Pittsburgh, even though Pittsburgh is not part of the Midwest. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but really, no, I, I was just curious, like, how did you do it? Did you feel like you really needed to get out of New York to, to you know, to play your music in other places? How did this come about? Definitely. I mean, we were offered a gig in Chicago playing at Millennium Park on August 9th. Oh. And we really, we thought, well, we can't say no, but we can't, also can't afford to fly all of our equipment out there. So it really started out as a practical thing where we just like, oh, well, we'll organize all the shows on the way there and on the way back so that we can drive. Um, <laughs> and it's very, a very unglamorous way of putting, putting the whole thing. But that's how it started. But then it, it is going to be really amazing to, for us to get outside of New York. I think you can easily be in a bubble in New York and have, a, you know, a very kind of warped impression of the effect your music has on people. Um, because New York is such a small and um, close knit kind of scene here. So I think to get out of it will be refreshing. And I, I have no idea what to expect. I mean, it, you know, it could be that, you know, people hate it but i think that i, I hope so. to <laughs> i hope that um but i'm just i'm just really looking forward to it i'm really looking forward to playing in front of different audiences yeah yeah well could you could you actually like i'm i'm going back and forth now but going back to to the album and to the music could you just just talk more about um not just about how you write but i'm thinking about you know how 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 I don't know how audiences perceive it, especially in terms of, um, you know, the flow of the music, the structure of the music, because I'm listening to it 
and it's very natural, very organic. But then there are all these surprises that happen mm -hmm. to me, like happy surprises, you know, in mm -hmm. texture and harmony and things like that. And like I said before, it seems like there's a real unifying, you know, musically there's like a a unifying theme. Could you talk about yeah about that? Sure. Well, I think all of my music um, it's built on on very simple things, very simple musical elements, like triads. Um, really simple melodies that repeat um, scales. All these things are the building blocks. I guess they're the building blocks of all music, but I like to use them in kind of a more obvious way. Mm. But then, so, and I, I like to start there because I think everyone has kind of um, a nostalgic emotional connection to these things. And you hear a major chord and you, you feel something. You hear a minor chord and you feel something. And you have, people have nostalgic connections to um, simple folk-like melodies. And so I want to use that, instead of trying to get away from all that and away from the baggage that people bring to music, I want to use that to my advantage. Um, so I, that's the, kind of the way that I start. But then I'm also interested in... Um, in surprising people. So I want to bring them in with this really simple material, but then have it go somewhere completely unexpected. Um, and that's the, the kind of music that I love does that. I mean, Sibelius does that. Um, you know, Radiohead does that. You know, it's all, they kind of draw you in with something that you think you understand only to take you in a direction that uh, is completely refreshing, but still logical. So, and I don't know if I'll ever really get there to the point where I feel like, yes, I'm really doing just that. But that's always the goal in every piece um, is to give people a way in and then take them on some kind of journey that's really kind of strange. Yeah, no, exactly. Actually, I mean, that's really quite similar to the way I feel about my music, you know, when I when I compose. Um, but it, at the same time, like, it's very, you know, you mentioned Philip Glass Ensemble and everything, and I can see the connection. But at the same time, it's very, you know, it's quite different than that, your music. It's, it, 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 it kind of takes off from that in a way. And um, how, how do you think, you know, how would you say, what distinguishes your music from the music of the previous, you know, generations of, let's say, minimalist composers or downtown composers? Well, I'm definitely inspired by all those people. I mean, and when I say that I modeled my ensemble on the Philip Glass Ensemble, it was really um, not so much from, not really from a musical perspective, but from a business perspective. You know, so the choice of instrumentation, the choice of people, the way that I pay them, you know, all these things are kind of modeled on the way that Philip Glass did things in the, in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. And, um, yeah. but, and so I think a lot of people call, will say, oh, it's, minimalist influenced or your music is minimalist and I always want to say no it's not because right. I while I'm influenced by them I'm just as much influenced by um romantic music and I love this sort of you know Schubert Beethoven Schumann like hard on your sleeve um kind of uh ecstatic nature of of romantic music and how it just yeah. kind of goes to these extremes and minimalism kind of goes to the other extreme and that's what I'm attracted to is music that really um has guts and that takes us somewhere um again really ex extreme <laughs> somewhere really far so i think that um my music has more of a i think of it as having more of a romantic um bent than a lot of minimalism does and i always fought with my old teacher louis andreessen who um was very kind of anti-romantic in a lot of ways and you know, we always kind of uh, would butt heads over um, things in my music that he felt were were too too romantic that came out of that tradition. And he and but I always stuck to them, and I'm really glad that that I did. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. It makes it like maybe that's why it's so surprising. You know, the moments that are surprising. Um, yeah, I know. I I completely agree. There are these moments of ecstasy. I think in your in your music in the pieces I've heard, not just from this album, but but the other things I've heard um, that I love. And um, and as far as the the, the